When you were actively managing money, you presumably were under the same pressures as other fund managers to show performance results. Right. Did that incline you to sell too quickly sometimes? Well, I think my greatest mistakes are, I mean, you know, it's, it's funny on a stock, all you can lose is 100%. I've done that. But your great mistakes is selling a good company and then doubles, then it triples and quadruples because you make a lot of mistakes. And so it's ones that go up tenfold, I call them the 10 baggers. So some of my mistakes are just saying, oh my God, this stock is too high. And I was wrong. And you had to figure out what inning am I in this baseball game? I sold Toys R Us way too early. It went up 20 fold after I sold. I did the same thing at Home Depot. Those are probably my two greatest mistakes I ever made. When should you sell? Well, you ought to find out why you bought a stock. If you're saying it's a cyclical company and they're doing poorly and they're doing awful, you wait till things are getting better and they're doing terrific and then you sell it. But with a growth company, you have to say, Walmart's case, 10 years after they went public, you could have bought the stock and made 500 times your money. You say, still are only in 15% of the United States. And you, they could say, why can't they go to 17? Why can't they go to 19? Why can't they go to 23? So for the next four decades, they went around the country. So you have to say to yourself, in this stock, I have a 10-year story, a 20-year story. I'll be able to write that down and follow that. And that's what I do with the company. And that's your decision. That's how you sell it. We have a novel element from mo many investors today in the trust issue. Yes. We also have security problems that we didn't traditionally yeah, right. have in America. Have they changed the way you pick and believe in stocks? No, you still buy a company, and you buy a company to grow. And if it's a textile company or it's an electronics company or software company, you better understand what they do. And, and if they do well, the stock will do well, no matter what happens to the market. If the Dow Jones today was 1,000 or 500, you would have made a lot of money in McDonald's. You would have made a lot of money in Johnson Johnson. You would have made a lot of money in Gillette. These companies' earnings have gone up a lot the last 30 years. And if the market was 50,000, you would have lost money in Burlington Industries. I recommended that in 1969. I think it's... I think it's gone from 34 to 2 with no stock splits because their earnings have been terrible. Well, your modesty actually makes an important point, which is people with the best batting averages in the world don't bat 1,000. Yeah. I sometimes get angry mail, particularly during bear markets, saying so-and-so yeah. recommended yeah. such and such and it went down. Yeah. Well, uh, how often did you come up with a clinker? Well, this, this is a funny business. You don't have to be right even five times out of ten. If the times you're right, you make a double and triple. It offsets all those times you lose 20 or 30 percent. So when you buy a stock, you ought to say to yourself, how much can I lose and how much can I make? And you ought to be able to make a lot. You see, stocks are risky. I mean, look, look at how much we lost on AT&T. Look at how much we lost on Xerox. These were quality companies. You know, you can lose a lot in a stock. So you ought to say to yourself, how much can I make? Because I want to buy a stock. If I'm right, I'm going to make a double or triple. Does your own confidence ever get shaken? Every day I think the market's going to go up. You know? <laughs> I keep calling a lot of my companies. So I keep calling the companies. You want